Um, up next, our speaker is Dr. Alvin Simmons from the uh, U.S. Vegetable Laboratory, uh, USDA, in Charleston, South Carolina. So, Dr. Simmons, I will let you take it away. And just, uh, just we're doing it up here. Just go through the, okay. the left and right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good afternoon. Wow, it's such an excitement to have a session that's really focused on a big problem, white flies. And that's why we have so many presentations, because indeed, it is a big problem. And part of the reason is it feeds on so many different types of plants, and it exists in so many different environments, and it's just quite frankly a problematic pest. And so I'll spend the next few minutes with you uh, summarizing some of the research that USDA ARS uh, uh, recently is doing. And USDA does not have any in-house projects that is specifically for white flies, but have in-house projects that have components of white flies. And I will touch briefly on uh, research in Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina in that order, um, and, and research that's being uh, led by ARS. And so I will not be uh, really talking about all the collaboration. So first, let's talk about the U.S. Arid Land Agricultural Research Center in Maricopa, Arizona in which the research on white flies really focused on biological control and looking at the, uh, the value that it's bringing to the cropping system and also for non-target effects of the new BT uh, cotton uh, in the system. And that's being focused on the ligas uh, and, and thrips. And looking at uh, past data over the past couple of decades, uh, a big change had happened up to uh, 20, 2005. And before that, it was the pink bow worm, which was a big problem. But after it being no longer uh, in the system, it was able to reduce the amount of pesticide applications, uh, which really made a big difference on the natural enemies. And so currently, sure, there is a pesticide application for the pests in the system, but because of that small, small number, relatively speaking, of sprays uh, per year, the natural enemies have an opportunity and they are uh, reducing the pests in the system, the, the ligus bugs, the white flies, and other, other pests. And now just briefly on uh, Salinas, uh, California, uh, uh, a project in which being led by uh, Bill Wintermount Mantle, on he's a pathologist, and to just briefly on some of the work that they have ongoing is two methods that were uh, developed to identify cucurbit viruses in the on uh, not only a single infection, but also a dual infection, which is, well, that's the real, real world. Uh, there are single infections in the field plus mixed infections. And so it's important that one's able to identify these and using these uh, incucurbits for some of the different uh, viruses as illustrated in the uh, figure uh, uh, below for the cucumber yellow, um, Excuse me, <laughs> cucurbit yellow, um, I'm drawing blank. I'll say it in a second. Uh, cucurbit yellow stunting disorder virus. It just wouldn't come out. <laughs> uh, also, uh, they are monitoring the uh, white fly virus, transmitted viruses in cucurbit uh, production. And there are really two regions where white flies are really expanding uh, in that area, uh, including the Gulf Coast region and also Central Valley in California. And, and likewise, the uh, viruses are, are spreading in those areas. And so it's important to be able to know what's there 
after all, to be able to uh, manage not only the white flies, but also the viruses in the area. Uh, also, there's work on RNA technology, uh, two systems, uh, one, tomatoes in the U.S., uh, and also uh, in East, East Africa uh, for the uh, cassava mosaic virus, which also a problematic, really, uh, food security issue uh, in that region. The uh, tomato Toronto virus is a virus is which fortunately not yet in detected in the U.S. And so uh, Bill Wintermallow and the others are working with USDA APHIS on being able to develop diagnostic tool for identifying uh, the Toronto viruses. And so that for the tomato Toronto virus, uh, that we can detect it to help prevent uh, not only the entry into the U.S., but also the spread uh, into the U.S. And we know we continue to, continue to have uh, exotic viruses that find way in the U.S. and spread across the U.S. Now, just briefly, in Fort Pierce, uh, of Florida, there are two projects which, which do uh, some white fly research as part of the projects. One is being led uh, by uh, plant pathology, the other by entomology. And for the pathology, uh, Scott Atkins is leading, and he and Bill uh, uh, Truth Church, uh, Jake, excuse me, uh, and others are uh, looking at uh, the detection of uh, cucurbit viruses in the southeast. Uh, and what is important in the system is the reservoir uh, management. And the cucurbit weed host uh, being important, uh, such as the smell, smell melon, um, the uh, uh, basm alpha uh, being important. But in addition to cucurbit weeds, uh, pig weeds are uh, important, a reservoir, uh, the crop green bean is an important reservoir, and uh, volunteer cucurbit crops uh, are a reservoir for, for the viruses. Uh, still at Fort Pierce, the entomology group, uh, Dr. Cindy McKenzie and Dr. Uh, Mohammed Ahmed uh, and others are, they have shown here some of the different uh, white fly uh, uh, pupae. Uh, there are over 75 different invasive white fly species in Florida, and there is continue uh, to have more come in, which seems like almost every year, not necessarily every year, but almost every year. But one uh, an important one is the uh, ficus uh, white fly, an important uh, uh, invasive white fly. And they have developed a chemical control uh, plan for, for help managing the re potential resistance uh, against this white fly species. And that's also including integrating with the natural enemies. And uh, they develop a, a website of, uh, to help the growers. And, and quite frankly, they were uh, recently received um, an award for the effort uh, that they've, they've done to, to help uh, the growers uh, against this particular uh, white fly species. And speaking of white fly research in Georgia, there is also a project in Gainesville, ARS project in Gainesville, Florida, uh, entomology-led uh, biological basic uh, taxes in which Dr. Susie Legaspi who is located in uh, Tallahassee, Florida, and she's uh, looking at the looking at the push-pull technology combined with uh, high tunnels as a tool for helping to protect against uh, uh, white flies and other tests. The uh, push-pull technology is. It's a combination of using uh, certain plants in the system to uh, push away or to repel uh, the insect pests, 
uh, having other plants to uh, attract the pests and hopefully to, to attract the natural enemies in the system. And so what, and so along the way, they are collecting data uh, throughout the season for the different pests in the system. And yes, we know that there are usually not just one pest at a given time, but multiple pests in the system. And at the end of the day, what they're, they're seeing is that by having uh, this push-pull system and the high tunnels, there is an uh, increase in the number of natural enemies in the system. And fortunately, the white flies and the other pests a population are being reduced. And this is something which can be especially uh, attractive to the uh, organic uh, uh, producers because they are more limited with what types of uh, control uh, that they can use in their systems. And I'll just briefly uh, go to the state of uh, Georgia for the ARS research projects pertaining to white flies, uh, two locations. One is at the uh, Southeast uh, Watershed Research Unit in Tifton, Georgia, in which uh, on the project uh, there is a new, new as in one year now, a new uh, scientist that joined the team, uh, Jonathan uh, O'Haran, um, in which his, his research is focused on pests in the landscape. And so that is white fly in this case, in the landscape. Uh, the other is, is at the fruit and tree nut uh, research uh, laboratory in, in Byron, Georgia, in which uh, Dr. David Shapiro Elon um, uh, is lead, leading. And uh, that work is focused on uh, the microbial control. And so there are uh, some uh, intermittent entomopathogenic nematodes in which have been selected that has uh, been demonstrated uh, to have uh, good uh, efficacy uh, in the laboratory. They're also uh, looking at that uh, now uh, in, the, um, in the greenhouse environment and the field uh, environment. Uh, also uh, further in uh, Tifton with the, uh, the new scientist, Jonathan O'Haran, in which, again, he's only been here for a year, so he's getting rolling. So you're looking at uh, a natural enemy, uh, a, a lady beetle, uh, harmonic, harmonia, uh, in which uh, it's, in a sense, is a problem during the winter uh, in coming to people's homes. And so he's looking at trying to provide uh, a field over winter house uh, for them. So they can come in and not have them come in people's houses, but, but really to come in and so that when they exit the field house, uh, they're already in the system and can potentially start uh, feeding on the natural enemies. Again, uh, that's just data that's just uh, being set up. And also he's looking at uh, the question of ultraviolet uh, irradiation uh, to control uh, white flies. Uh, this uh, uh, technique is commonly called uh, 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 germicidal uh, irradiation. It has been looked at uh, some, some other pests, notably in, uh, in Florida, uh, with, with thrips and some others, and I suspect, well, he didn't tell me this, but I suspect he may have thought about this from his previous work when he was in Florida, but what he's seeing already is for the eggs of the white flies that this system uh, is uh, uh, reducing the egg hatch uh, in the system. And also he's looking at the natural enemies, notably predatory uh, mites in the system, uh, in which he's done some, some field tests with four different uh, predator mite species and, and, and seeing some reduction, in which he'll be doing some uh, laboratory assays later. And now, uh, finally, let's briefly talk about some of the research in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, where I'm located. There are three uh, research uh, projects that uh, do uh, have some white fly components 
in it. Uh, two of them are uh, pathology-led, one by a uh, plant uh, virologist, uh, Kashu Ling, uh, and the other by uh, Che Kuzit, a plant pathologist. And I I'm not going to be focused on them because uh, I'm an entomologist, so let's talk about entomology. Uh, and on entomology, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Sharon Andreessen, uh, she's been uh, uh, part of the lab for the past two years, and some of her uh, work, well, her work is on vector uh, entomology, uh, uh, focused on white fly uh, uh, transmission of viruses in different uh, vegetable crops. And also, um, well, I'll just go to the next slide. And also, um, uh, some recent work that she's been, she and uh, Shaker Cusit is on the uh, uh, leaf curl virus uh, in watermelon of, 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 in, of resistant and, relatively speaking, resistant and um, non-resistant um, uh, germplasm. Uh, a watermelon. And so on the uh, one hand, uh, when we say resistance, it's really a relative term. There is not 100% resistance. It just has some resistance. But and when uh, testing, assaying the white flies on these, on the susceptible one, the white flies uh, that feed on these were able to, uh, they're not transmit, they are transmitting uh, the virus, whereas on the resistance for white flies that are feeding on these, uh, the virus is there, but the uh, white flies are not uh, transmitting uh, on those. Uh, some work I mentioned earlier about RNA, uh, I um, work in which uh, I mentioned about from the uh, Salinas Laboratory um, that was collaboration, and this was some of the uh, follow-up on that work, in which uh, there are some, uh, some, some, some tomato lines, uh, some, some lines in which uh, we are seeing some, some great activity. This is uh, still ongoing, and and I'll just leave, leave that there. Uh, for a white fly. Uh, parasitoids, parasitoids are really great uh, in the system. They are great in, uh, in greenhouse system uh, releasing uh, parasitoids uh, for, for to help manage uh, white flies in those systems. But the, the question is uh, what actually are out there in the, in the system? And so uh, there's a uh, Postdoc uh, 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 that we have um, um, just drew his blank on his name, uh, Dr. Leahy, <laughs> uh, in which, in which uh, Zach Leahy, uh, in which that's part of his expertise of uh, uh, taxonomy, and so we were, we're looking at what are the parasitoids are there and trying to clarify the actual taxonomy of the group of, of Incarcia and uh, Eritmosphorus. And uh, just uh, earlier this year, uh, a, a parasitoid from Florida, in which we identified as a new uh, parasitoid, uh, Incarcia hera. And we know that there are more out there, just that they're not yet identified. And and that's just part of the research that we're doing there. And so to just talk a little bit more about uh, resistance. Uh, in this case, I can talk about briefly about root knot nematodes in which we know they are a big problem if you're growing plants anywhere. And uh, there are over 70 uh, described species of root knot nematodes. And like other pests, we have continued uh, in invasive. The guava root knot Nematode is a uh, invasive, problematic uh, nematode, and uh, now we know that at least they were shown here for August of 2022, showing the reported um, uh, range of it in the southeast so far, um, and uh, it's a problem. 
And so uh, uh, for um, uh, research that we were doing in which a um, nematologist, um, Will Rotter uh, in Charleston, uh, had screened some of the different pepper lines for resistance to root knot nematodes, and, uh, and specifically uh, the guava root knot nematodes. And so to have a resistant plant, sure, it's great if it's resistant to one pest, but it's much greater to have it resistant to more than one or many different pests. And so we went to look at some of these lines against uh, that show some promises of resistance to the root knot nematode to also see if they have some resistance to white flies. And, uh, and so initially we just looked at a few of the uh, uh, the hot peppers, the pungent ones, and, and just one of the bell peppers uh, uh, for comparison. And what, what we saw is basically the same thing, whether it's choice test or no choice, that the PMER, uh, it just continued to show on relatively uh, being not attractive uh, to the white flies compared with some of the others. And when we look at the survival of the white flies on this, we also found that it was, um, uh, didn't really survive on it as much. And when we looked, did the smell test, the factometer, we found that most of these, uh, that they were uh, attracted to the plants, but interesting, uh, the second uh, slide on, from the left is that it was more uh, repellent, and that was actually the bell pepper interesting. And uh, just for our close, I'd like to just mention that there's a poster outside on the, uh, our four projects uh, in which, in, uh, Dr. Uh, in which uh, University of Florida and ARS, please stop by to see it. And this is part of the research efforts in support of the IR4 uh, project so that we can have rare compounds against, against uh, not only white fly, but also other pests and diseases and weeds uh, that are needed. And thank you to all of the collaborators with ARS and the university collaborators and others. And if there's any type of questions, Hopefully there is. I would be love to entertain. Right. Anybody got any questions for Dr. Simmons? Good. Well, Dr. Simmons, we appreciate you for your presentation, all the work you do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.